challenges Amen. we are talking about joy today i mean give me some good faces you know i don't want you to look at me and scare me hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. well i actually forgot that it's going to be an english service and i've never in my life preached in english really it's my first time so if i add some king around and mix some of the things yo bear with me because it's my first time literally i haven't just gave a whole ceremony in in, in english but we thank the Lord is I have supernatural things and we're going to see wonders. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence in our midst, O oh God. Come and minister to your children, talk to us. It's not by mighty, it's not by power, but the spirit of the living God. We welcome you. We acknowledge your presence and we acknowledge that you're going to talk to our hearts, O oh God. Mend our hearts. Let them listen. Let them wake up and see what you gave us for free. I pray this in the mighty name of Christ. Amen and amen. Well, I'll give scriptures and I will flag them to the group of WhatsApp because I know I can be a bit faster and I don't want you to be scared that you won't get them later because I won't be reading like one on one. So it's good to keep them for your records, right? So we're going to use Nehemiah 8, Nehemiah 8 verse 10, John 15 verse 11. That's the second one. Proverbs 12, 25. Psalms 16, 5 to 11. John 16, 24. And the second letter of Corinthians 9, 7. I know I'm a bit faster than how... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you can write on that page, but whoever wants this and is not, he's not using WhatsApp, you can always... Find me here after the service and I will share this with you, right? So, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to acknowledge, um, uh, I'm so thankful, first of all, to God because he gave me grace to stand in front of you. You are special and it's a privilege that God gathers us together and gives us his word. He feeds us with his word. So, it's a privilege. If you are here, I want you to not take it as, I mean, as likely because... Some of the people are not here and they wanted to be here. So it's a grace and the Lord wants to serve you with something. He wants to give you something precious. So be of, expe I mean, raise your expect expectations in front of God and the Lord will fill you up as much as you are, you know, you are hungry. So uh, I'm so joyful to be welcomed by Favor. She knows me as a teenager. Matter of fact, she's the person who introduced me to the classes, VCC classes. I mean, she's one of the people I first met when I reached to ERC. You know, when you come here at church, you, teenagers' ministry was not like this back then. So people tell, can tell, right? We, we, we did not have, I mean, structured fellowships or a structured system where we would come. So most of the times we would go there. So going there as a teenager, because I think I was 16, if not 17, when I joined DRC, and you, we didn't know anybody. And Fever was so humble enough to talk to kids. And we reached out to her. I don't know if because she had a small size. I don't know. Because I, I looked at her and I was like, I think that one is me. She's kind. She can help us. I was with Grace. And then we reached out to her and we asked, we don't have a permission to come at church in the evening, I mean, post, uh, post 6 p.m. Can you please teach us classes in the daytime as kids? Because you don't have a permission of 6 p.m., right? You know, if you don't have curfew at home, Praise the Lord, but as, as then I had curfew to go home at 6 p.m. So, and I wanted classes so bad. And the tip, you ever get 6 p.m. because I'm on age, the Rwanda is starting to come. <laughs> it's a bear with me. And we, we, we reached out to her, and then she helped us. She did not help us to give us class because, you know, a teacher can be a teacher and give you classes, and it will end from there. But Fever mentored me and my other friends on a personal basis. <laughs> on a personal basis. I thank you forever, and it's an honor to stand here, to be welcomed by you, to be to hear those kind words that you said before. It's amazing. So, you guys, if you are here and you're a teenager, it's your first time. Everyone looks like they know each other, and you're just left out. Please have courage. Go to her. Favor can help you. And she, the Lord is raising many other favors in the ministry. We have now a structured ministry. We have all that it takes for you to be raised and to be nurtured, to get to be fully equipped to do what the Lord wants you to do. So when you are welcomed with the person who welcomed you the first time, it feels good. I, I just feel honored and humbled. So let's go straight to the words. You guys, um, we have the theme that says um, how to keep the joy of salvation. 
Oh, first I want you to understand why we keep this. If you were to go, we don't have beaches in Rwanda, but if you would go to the sand and you get some little precious stone, and maybe it's diamond, but for some reasons you don't know that it's diamond. Sometimes you might take it lightly, and sometimes you might throw it, right? Because you don't know as much of how it values, right? You don't know it's... Okay, let's say, as a kid, if you could give me many coins, I would, re I would choose many coins instead of maybe giving me one big note, right? So sometimes blindness and us lacking knowledge of about things and how things can be precious will make us take things lightly. Will make us take things lightly. That's how human beings are. That's how we operate. If you know something is, not, is less of advantage, you are likely to not keep it, right? You're not likely to treasure it or keep it, right? But if you're to know that you picked a diamond, trust me, you go to the jewelry store and measure and, you know, and hold it as something very precious, right? Is that true? Do you keep your dress? Okay, let me, let's, let's be honest. The way you keep your nightwares and the way you keep the church that, you, you, that was sued for a particular wedding that you are really excited about, is it the same? If your sister touches it, dares to touch it, you're like, hey, <laughs> slow down. This is my dress, right? Because you know how much it values. It's so much valuable in your life. So I want you to understand how joy is valuable. Joy is valuable. Joy is not just something of being joyous. It's something precious. And if, we, if the Lord would open our eyes to see what joy means in the life of a Christian, then we would you will resolve to keep it, right? You will resolve to keep it. First and foremost, uh, the joy of salvation on, only comes in the package of salvation. There is no any, uh, anywhere else to get, uh, to get the joy, right? So to mean, if you, have, if you don't have a personal covenant with Christ, if you are not a born-again person, you are, not going to, you are not going to get any of the things you're talking about here. You're not going to get it because this is the joy that you only receive when you receive Christ in, the, in your heart. If you are left out, you are just experiencing what I would say, temporal refuge, you know, a temporal refuge where you can hide yourself for a small, uh, few hours and then you, you get out and the reality hits you back. Do you know that? Do you know how you get the enjoyment watching a, 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 series, a series of movies and, right and right after the series, you get back to the reality? That's the life I used to live before Christ. I used to live in life... I mean, creating joy for myself, right? Because I didn't know the real joy, and I searched for many other things that are really not joy, that are not real joy. So I'm talking about real joy that comes from salvation, that comes from when you gave your life to Christ. This is a joy that has not perished with days or that is up and down. This is a constant, consistent joy that is given with God. So... My dear sister or brother, if you're here and you haven't received Christ in your heart, mark that. Mark that. You are searching joy in the wrong places. There is only one way, and it's Christ. It's only found in Christ if you will be humble enough to understand that you don't have him, and bow down and let him fill your heart, then you will experience the real joy. And for those who have experienced the real joy, they, they know what I'm talking about. Then they understand why we need to keep God of it. So... Without further ado, let me give a uh, few points of the importance of joy. I want you to understand why we are keeping this. It's not in vanity. So first, um, joy, uh, joy is our strength. Joy is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Do you guys know that one of the biggest, like, the biggest signs of depression is being a lazy person? When you are depressed, you don't want to do anything. Do you know that? You don't even want to wash your body, trust me. You don't want to do anything. You just want to stay, and the whole world is like shut down, right? So there are many depressed Christians here because they don't have joy of the Lord. They are not. We, actually, when we receive Christ, we receive the package that has joy in it. But for some reasons, we can lose the joy of the Lord. We can mistreat it and live in a broken joy, not experiencing the joy while it's there. Do you know, like, if I would give Stella this, there is joy inside, right? There is, this is joy, this is peace, this is what? And I give this to her, and then you, you're supposed to use this, right? But instead of using it, you're just holding it like this, right? Do you know how it feels? Like, you are starving when you have the food. Do you get that? 
So when we receive Christ, we have access to, to joy. We have access. Do not let the devil deceive you. You have access to the joy. But it's on you to believe God and accept and renew your mind that you have joy and you have access to it and start operating in joy, right? So we talked about people without Christ that they don't have joy. And we're talking about two Christians who have joy but do not even realize they have joy. And they live in mediocrity because they don't have joy. Depression comes when you lose... I mean, joy gives strength and gives you purpose. I mean, I, I'm not, I, I just want to get the right word. Um, may the Lord help me. Back, back, up, back up for me, guys, people who are behind on the, on the what? Eh? Yeah. Uh, joy is our strength, right? Joy is my strength. Joy will give you power to drive even in the situation that does not seem possible, right? Do you know... It takes courage, it takes joy that to wake up in the morning and face the day because there are things that can make you stay in your bed, right? It, joy is the drive. When you don't have joy, when you don't have the appetite, trust me, you don't do anything. That's the truth. Even going to revise, I'm talking about teenagers. Do you know when you are joyous and you wake up in the morning, take your books, read your math, do your things? Having joy filled with that energy because joy is the energy. It, the, the output of joy is strength. So do you need power and strength in your life? Do you need anyhow, anywhere? Do you need joy in your? Do you need power in your life? If you need power, then you need joy. Yes. If you need power, then you need joy. Because this is like a drive. This is like, a, 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 how do I call this? A generator, right? A generator that pushes and that supplies energy for you to do what you're supposed to do in your life. And teenagers, I want to remind you: as small as you think you are, you have a mandate on this world. There is something you are created for. And if you're not joyous enough. You're not going to face this life because life is hard. Trust me, it's hard. For real, it's hard. It's not a joke. And it's hard for everyone. It's hard for a kid. It's hard for a baby. It's hard for old people. But there is a secret that we have. We have joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is our joy. So I want you to see how precious joy is. It's not just a thing, right? It's not G-O-Y, right? It's something. Joy is a drive. If you need power, if you need strength, then joy, check your, 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 your engine. Check your engine. Is it working? If you see there are things that are not going well and you are lazy about, of the, you are lazy about the ministry, you are lazy about your, yourself, you are lazy about everything, literally. Check the engine. Check the engine. Do I have my fuel? Where is it? Where is it? Where is the joy? You see? So we, talk, we are talking about how joy is important in our life and how precious it is for us to trigger us to keep it, to be to be eager to trigger it, to, to, to seek it. Second, joy is the commandment from our king. The Lord asks us to be joyous every time, to rejoice in him always. And as thinking of this, it's not like um, that our God is like a policeman. It's, like, it's not like, I remember, <laughs> do you remember in COVID times when there is this police, uh, uh, honorable police, uh, Kabira, you would always have like Jeraya Mahoro or something, with Gumamurugo or something like in a, in a strong, you know, in a posture that is a bit, you know, scary and you're like, hey, if I don't do this, they will kill me, right? Because, you know, so God is not like this. God commanding us to be joyous, it's because he did what we need to be joyous. He's not like, he's not unfaithful, he's not a wicked master. He's not like pressing us to be joyous. No, 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 he's not doing that. The Lord gave us what it takes to be joyous. And he understands that if my, my people would know how joyous, how being joyful is important to them, then they will understand that I'm doing good to them. So I, don't, I, I know people don't like commandments. When you read this commandment, you're like, ah, commandments. We, we are rebellious by, by nature, and we don't like commandments. But when the Lord is commanding us to be joyful in him, it's not any other, like, a wicked, it's not like wickedness. It's not like he's wanting more from us. He's worthy for us to be joyful about him. Our Lord is worthy for us to wake up and be happy because we have him. It is, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, because Christ did what it takes. Christ gave himself to us. Our Lord gave, he gave everything he had. Is he asking much? If he tells you to wake up in the morning and be joyful about him, is, it asking, is he asking much? Is he asking a lot when he says, be joyous? Because I paid the price. I, I gave myself. What else do you want? I gave everything. 
what you have what you don't have is not that i didn't give it's not that it's still that you are you're, you're still blind to not know that i gave it because paul said and he's, he was urging this church in his letter saying i pray that you could know what you were given for free there are things we have but we don't even know that we have them there are things we have in the package of salvation but we don't realize that we have them and we are there living in our mediocrity because of our lack of knowledge. But today we thank the Lord that he's giving us new sight. He's opening our eyes to see that we have joy and we are going to operate this. And it's so precious that we need to keep it, right? Praise the Lord. Do you want to please the Lord in your life? Do you want to please the Lord? Then you need to be just because he commands us to do that. And we are talking about him being worthy. Aren't you content of what the Lord did in your life? Aren't you happy that you are born again as a teenager? What I'm saying, beloved, some other kids are out there. They're living a life that is miserable. I want you to consider it uh, as true joy, seeing yourself in the life that you are living. I want you to understand how important it is. I want you to understand that Christ gave out his life for you to live a, a life in abundance, right? For you to live a complete, fulfilled life. Isn't he worthy of our joy? Is he asking much if he wants us to be joyous? Is he asking much? Is he asking much teenagers? So it's important to be joy, to be joyful, right? So we are still talking about how precious it is to be joyous in the sight of the Lord. And it's, it's a commandment, yes. But again, scientifically proven and biblically proven that it's good for our bodies, for wellness and healthy and health and, and our health and wellness. Doctor is with us, he can tell. When people are joyful, we have Dr. Benaya. This ministry is blessed. We are blessed in all dimensions, all dimensions. He knows that our bodies are wired to obey the commandments of God. And if we are joyous as God asks, because God, when he's giving us commandments, it's for our good. Basically, if God is commanding you something, then say, I am lucky because he's he knows he's, he's curing you stomach uh, ulcers. Stomach ulcers. Is that how we call them? Yes, stomach ulcers. If you're joyful, there are things you will not have in this life. There is the strokes you're not having. Am I, am I right, doctor? Right. I'm totally right. Well, I'm not a biology course scientist, but biblically proven and from the biology that I had a long time ago, I can say that being joyous helps our body. So, do you want to live a, a healthy body as, as Christians, as teenagers and in your old days. Do you want that? Do you want to live in healthy bodies, having a well-balanced life even in here? Do you want that? Yes. But you guys, I don't know, is it that English is boring? I don't understand. What, what's going on? <laughs> is it that English is boring? Say amen. Give me a amen. amen. <laughs> I, I'm saying, do you want that? Do you want healthy bodies, strong bodies, good faith? I mean, Beauty comes that, re that is reflected from joy. Do you know that? It exists. There are some people who are beautiful and who are nice because they are always joyous. Because that's beauty, actually. That's the point of beauty. Being joyous reflects the glory of God and people start seeing the, the goodness of God. Do you want that? Yes. Is this precious? Is this worthy to keep? Is it worthy to seek? I want you to understand if joy is really worthy. Is it worthy? Yes. Is it? Yes. Well, um... Another thing that I want us to stress on is the, that joy makes our sacrifices pleasant in the sight of the Lord. Joy makes our sacrifices pleasant in the sight of the Lord. I'm sure many of us here in our hearts are burning to please the Lord. And you're doing everything possible to please the Lord. But I want to tell you one thing that is going to make your sacrifice eligible or not the joy are you sacrificing to the lord with joy or you're just doing it grumbling behind right so if you want your sacrifice to be disqualified just go with grief <laughs> just go with grief serve the lord with grief <laughs> do you know how it feels bad when you ask a person of a service and they give it to you in a with an attitude do you, do you know how it's that do you think god loves that you think God loves you coming in, in push you and you ah this facilitators are mess ah retreat ah fasting every day you are grumbling you, come on come on you are making your sacrifice disqualified in the sight of the Lord and this is how 
the Israels were doing it as well. They are fasting, they are tearing their clothes, they are doing what? But they are just going there when their hearts are not there. So this is very key. Joy is very key. If it can make you sacrifice pleasant in the Lord, then this is something worth it. I think it's the other diamond that we're talking about. It's not just a thing that is there. It's something. It's something valuable in the sight of the Lord because this thing qualifies or disqualifies your sacrifices in the Lord. If you're giving your body to Christ, if you're doing what others are doing and you're doing it grumbling and you're doing it, and you're doing it, you, you understand what I'm saying? We hate it as human beings. Why do we give God those kind of things? It's not even worthy for a human being. Do you think it's worthy for God? Well, it's, it's important and precious. It's worthy to, ke- to be kept and to be desired and to, be, and to run after it if it's possible to run a marathon, right, for this, because it's precious, right? Um, another thing, it's a sign that the, there is the presence of God. You already know it. Where the Lord is, there is surely, there is joy. Joy is just there in abundance. So let's go quickly to, to how to keep this, because... Uh, at this point, and I hope everyone understands that uh, joy is important and we need it in all aspects. It's, it's amazing to have joy. It's amazing to have joy. Hey, there is another one more thing I forgot to say. There is a special anointing of joy <laughs> that separates you from any other person. That the Lord pours. I forgot that one. Ah, how can I miss that one? So, for <laughs> there is an, a certain specific anointing of joy that the Lord gives. And when you have that, you are different from anybody else. You're different from your brethren, you're different from the people, and it makes you different. What makes you different is the anointing of joy that you have on your life. So it's worthy, right? It's worthy, it's precious. I don't want you to take it lightly. It's something that will drive you. It's something that will make your body healthy. It's something that will please the Lord. It's something that you make your sacrifices acceptable and pleasant in the sight of the Lord. So this is worthy to seek and to keep, right? It's worthy teenagers. So. I want us to say that we're supposed to keep it because there is somebody who doesn't want us to have it. Usually we keep things. There are things you cannot keep. If you know you are safe, right? There are things you know at home, you don't need to keep your things because at home, it's at home. Things, it's okay. Can mama favor? Can mama favor for God's sake? Take the glasses, the mugs, the coffee water, and keep them from Benaya. You try to tell me, can, can she do that? So, but you do that. You can't. Can you take your things and hide them in your room when you're in your room? Can you? You are in a safe place, right? But you need to keep what you are sure that somebody else wants to steal. It's in danger. Meaning, if you hold, holding and having joy, it's, some, it's a danger, it's a red flag to the devil. So he does not want you to have that joy. He does not want you to have that joy. Because he knows when you have that joy, then he can't do anything to you. So what he's going to do, he's going to run, strategize things. We are talking about, we're going to talk about a few of the things he uses as prairie teenagers. Because I've been here and I, I can tell a few of the things, what, the, few of the strategies. We can expose him, at least what he did in my life. I, was, I would know that I would expose it. And he would definitely want to get that thing from you. He does not want you to be joyous. The devil likes it when you are depressed because he uses much in that position. He loves it when you, are, you don't have joy. He loves it when you are sad. He loves it when you are grieving. Do you know that? He loves it and he, it is his intention because he's scared that you can possess this joy. So now that I know that in the retreat you, you restore, the, the, there was a restoration of the joy in your heart. And I be, were you restored? Were you restored people in the retreat? Well, you restored with the joy. Do you have the joy bubbling now in the spirit? You are, eh? you are filled with the joy. So I want to tell you bad news. Somebody doesn't want you to hold that. He's scared. He's scared. He hates you at the point he doesn't have you to possess that. Because his mission here is to steal, kill, and destroy. So be, beware of the enemy. Beware. I love what the, how the Bible says, beware of the enemy. He's roaring around, like looking for some, someone to devour. Somebody who is lost, who is just there. And this is why the Lord is sending this word on a day like this, for you to be aware that what you took last time, the devil doesn't want you to possess it. So it is in this, it is in this position or in this particular time that I'm coming here to say, beware, there is somebody who doesn't like what you keep. He wants you to stay in grief. Because he knows if you are in grief, then you are in his position. You are in his territories. He's not scared of you anymore. Now that you escaped from his territory, do you think, do you want to go back there? Do you know what happens in Egypt? Yo, it's not funny. It's not good. 
What the devil does when he has you, it's bad. Yes. It's bad. He takes captivity of you. He ruins your life. So that's why I don't want you to stay there. Even the Holy Spirit doesn't want that. I'm sure you also don't want that. Maybe you don't know the way out. But we, today we are saying it. What I want you to do is please open your eyes. I pray that the mighty Lord, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of the new sight will touch everyone's eyes and everyone will know. We will know. We understand and comprehend the strategies of the enemies. And the Lord will lead you out. Because there are... We are in a battle, we are in a battlefield. This life is a battlefield. It's not for the faint hunted. For sure, this life is not for the faint hunted. It's not. And the, the Bible says everyone can faint. That's how funny it is. The, in Psalms, the, the, <laughs> they say, like, a race is not for the faint hearted, right? A race is not for the faint hearted, for people who are in, you know. But again, the Bible clearly says, don't you know? Even young men like us, like young people like us, People, teenagers filled with a passion, we can also grow weary. We are human beings. We are weak. We need the grace of God. The same grace that delivered us and took us from EO before salvation and got us here. It's the same grace that we need to face this devil, to face this, this whole battle and win this, win this battle in victory. So you see, we are on a battlefield. What I'm giving you... What the Lord is sharing with you right now is how we can do this. How are we going to fight this? How are we going to fight this battle and win? Because the Bible says we are more than conquerors in him. Amen. Not outside, in him. So you, we can win, we can have victory, we can be joyous, we can shame the devil, we can embarrass him, we can live in victory because he who is in us is greater than who is in him. I mean, he is greater than the devil. So if the Lord gracefully took us from that captivity of grief and we are now operating in joy, we need to keep this. We need to keep this. We need to beware that this is precious. The devil does not want you to have it. Adversary doesn't want you to have this. He does not want this. May the Lord help us. May the Lord open our sight. May the Lord touch our eyes and show us what to do in a such season. Because we are in a serious season. And the Bible urges us to redeem time. Beloved, you only know the days you lived. You don't know the rest. You don't know. And for you to live the rest victoriously, you have to live, to live them with joy. Trust me, we need joy. Because joy is fewer. It is the engine. It keeps the, the vehicle moving. Even in the tough times, it keeps the vehicle moving. Even naturally what makes a car move like this? What, does, what makes a car move in the upward directions? Because a car can always move even without... I had it can move down without fuel. Is it true? I, I don't drive, so I don't have a license. At my age, I don't know about that. But they told me, well, I had... I, I'm, I'm honest, I don't have a license. <laughs> I heard that a car can only move straight, it can only move, it can like move downside like without fuel. Yes. It can actually, oh, without a generator, something like that. It can move without, you know, that thing. But when it goes in the upwards, it will not move, it will be stuck. Is it true? Yes. Are you guys the yeah, dot com generation? <laughs> you already know much better than me. So you already know the life is like this. It is sloppy, valley, hilly like this. So how do you think you're going to go without the fuel? We talked about the fuel. It's the drive. It's the energy. It's the joy of the Lord. This is very key. It is very key to have joy. It is very key to have joy. Now we are aware that we need joy, but we are also aware that we have somebody else who doesn't want to have this joy. So this, there is a battle in between. There is a battle in between. At this point, teenagers, I hope you, you know the enemies that we have. How many enemies do we have? How many enemies do you have? Classes, you all. Hey, don't, don't. Please, please, now. Please, your teachers are here. <laughs> you can't do this to me. How many enemies do you have? Three? Okay, the copies of our is not good. We have three enemies, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The devil and the demons, number one. That, like, that's a combo of two. It's the devil and his armies, right? Uh -huh. Second? Flesh, this is us. It is a combo of us. Uh-huh. Third? And this word. 
Uh -huh. The world, the system, the world, if you're talking about the world, it's not about the trees, it's not the earth. I'm talking about the systems in the world. So these three combines together to ruin you. Two of them you don't have control, but one you have control. And one that is flesh is the wicked of them because it's in you. It is you. Actually, it is your desires, right? The flesh is you. The flesh wants you to do wrong. It wants you to <coughs> disobey the commandments of God. So the devil entices you. Okay, the devil, actually, this is it. The world is there with its enticing systems, right? And there is the devil who is inspiring the, the, the world to give all that. And there is the you, you, who wants that. And you're wanting to stop yourself because when you step there, you are entering in the danger, in the danger territory. Because when you're operating under the flesh, you're always going to be, to, to be oppressed by the devil. I want you to understand. This is very key. Beloved, there is no... Just because you think you are young, the devil does not have pity, does not have mercy for you. Just because you think you are a teenager and you're like, ah, I think the demons, at least they'll have pity. They're not. They attack you, they attack a baby, they attack an old man. They, in the spiritual world, it's not about that. It's about principles. Yes. Please beware of this. This is why some of you, your life, you're seeing it and it's miserable from A to Z. Oh God, how I pray that our eyes will be open today. May the Lord, and I know he wants it, please cooperate with him. Those are the enemies, right? So what happened, let me give an, instant, an, an example. You come here, filled with the joy, filled with the spirit. You go home. The, in, the, 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 the word starts doing what it does. It's filled with the lust of eyes, lust of flesh, and pride of life, right? You get home, there is a new series or Netflix or something, and you are here filled with the Holy Spirit. You're like, shaka ta ta ta. Oh, my mom, you are filled because when you are in the presence of God, when you have joy, you are in the presence of God, and you are longing for things from above. You're not even here. Trust me, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, Sometimes I would, I would ask God, God, am I going back to the world? Am I, is this going to end and I will go back to the normal life? And I'm scared to leave the presence of God, right? So when you get out of the, the retreat, when you're getting out, when Mama Feva said all of this, or when Deborah said all of this, you go home. Netflix is there. If food is there. Everything you like is there. Oh, let's, let me have some fun. Oh, God, I'll pray. Uh, you, you, you came out for, from here. You have your commitments. Oh, God, from now I'll be praying. I'll be reading my Bible. I want to redeem my time. I want to know how to use my time well. You're taking new decisions, right? Because you come from here when you are, you are sent. Angels, version, version, something, I don't know. When you get home, ah, Netflix is there. And how the devil drains the, the, the joy. It's, it does not ask, it takes him long. He entices you with a fake joy. And you start losing what you have. I mean, when you have something precious and you know, you will hold it tight and you keep your eyes and you're like, no, merci, I don't even want that. But when you don't know what you possess, sometimes you can start looking at that and you throw down your jar. Oh, it's that. Oh, I also want this. And you, you go to Netflix, you start getting things, you start getting friends, a party, oh, we go to drink, Instagram, Snapchat. And now you start, you, you realize you are running for fake things and you leave the real thing. When you leave the real thing, automatically what happens, you feel it. I mean, in your heart, you know something is wrong. You know, you start losing your joy, right? You start losing the appetite of God. And what you feed yourself, you crave for that. If you, you feed yourself with so much Bible, you crave Bible. If you feed so much with seeking the Lord, you, you crave seeking the Lord. If you fill yourself with so much of movies, you crave the movies. You never, you never crave God. Even our taste buds, what you give them often, and you convince that you convince it that you like it. It ends up liking it. I, I I crack jokes sometimes. When I was a kid, I didn't like vegetables. Trust me, I didn't. Especially cucumbers. I looked them. They looked too, they looked white. They looked green. I didn't. What is this? And then <laughs> there was a season in my life where I was, I was like, ah, I need to shed some weight. Let me at least start getting the salads. Eh? Then when I ate the salad for the first time. I was like, I'm convincing myself this is good. I ended up, like, literally I love cucumbers at the point because I trained myself to love them. I went out and I was like, let me try them. It was not good at the first time. I added lemon, I added anything. They told me everything to sweetenize it. Eh? And then I took it and I was like, this is so good. At this point, it's one of the favorite things I love. But honestly, honestly, that's, how ta but that's what happens. In I mean, real life teaches us the spirit. This is what happens. If you fill yourself with the Bible, 
you went you, by God's grace because this is a spiritual matter and it's the Lord who entices us to have this. And I'm sure everyone who received Christ in, amongst you, you have the desire of God in your heart. However much you want it or not, you have it. You can quench it completely and leave it. But there is something that tells you you need the Bible. There is a hunger of things of God. Sometimes you can't explain it, but it's there, right? So the only way, the only way of getting cured from the world, it is to feed yourself with so much of God, so much of godly friends, so much of fellowships, so much of the Bible, so much of being in retreats, so much of taking your time and go to talk to God intimately, right? But if you fill yourself with those things, it is fake joy, I told you, because the only joy it is in him. When you seek him, you find the joy. You, you, your joy abounds, actually, because you already have the joy, but it abounds, right? But when you run after those other things that look like fake joys, right, you start losing the real joy. You see what I mean? So this is where the term consecration that I hope you've had many times here in this house falls in. This is literally dying on yourself, dying on that flesh that tells you you want things that you know that the Lord does not want. Is it doable? Is it hard? Is it hard? Let's be honest. It's so hard. Matter of fact, it's impossible. Because the flesh is so strong. Trust me, it's not flesh. Flesh kills a, a, a great man. It takes a minister and you find them with a prostitute. Flesh. Flesh does not fear anyone. Flesh. Flesh takes an honorable man and makes him a dog. Literally, a dog in Kinyaranda, that's how they say. May a coward maybe in English, I don't know. <laughs> Literally, kamujirimku munwari muzimu hagaze muzima. Flesh. Flesh is strong. Flesh is strong and you can do it on your own. The way you're getting wrong, where you're getting it wrong is that you're doing it on your own. You're doing it on your own. Teenagers, you're doing it on your own. Stop it. You, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. In this world, remember, we used to celebrate independence of Rwanda and we still celebrate it, don't we? Independence of Rwanda, right? In the world, when you're under someone or when you're under the authority of somebody, it's like a sign of weakness, right? It's like you are a little person who can take decisions on your own and, you know. Eh. But in the kingdom of God, we are called. We are called to surrender, to live our life like kids. We are called to live our life and to live under the authority of God fully, to be enabled by him. You know when a country is colonized, you don't monitor anything. For if you, you go to vote, you ask the the. the, the how do you call them? The, colon the colonizer, right? You go to him, you reach out. Do we vote or not? Do we collect taxes? Yes. Do we you consult them on every and everything, right? And beloved, you will just have to choose the between the two masters because there will never be where you're going to be a free person in this world. Either you are a slave, a slave of the master, God Jesus Christ, or you are a slave of the devil. That's the two, those are the two authorities, the, the sovereigns around. Those are the two sovereigns existing, right? You either choose to be in the slavery of God or you choose to be in the slavery of the enemy, right? So it's all slavery. What do you choose? Do you choose a slavery that will lead you to life and transformation and peace and joy or you choose to, to, to death and destruction? It is, it, is your, it is on your own to choose, right? It is on your own to choose at this point, right? You can choose. You always have choices, right? You can choose. So... I was telling you, we have to guard the, the joy, right? We have the enemy. And the only way we can stop this enemy from our lives is to accept to die on our flesh. It is painful. But when you allow God to do it for you, you never even feel the pain because he will take it for you. He will guide you. When you cry to the Lord, Father God, help me do this. Help me live for you completely, fully. If you... Commit yourself and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Because in kingdom of God, the only way, the, the elevation starts from surrendering. It starts from the knees. It starts from you lowering down and understanding that you can't do anything on your own and you just need God. That's where victory lies in the kingdom of God. So if you want victory over your flesh, I don't know where your flesh, where your flesh drags you to. Because it drags people in different places. Some to drunkenness some to immorality, sexual immorality, some to many other things. Some of them I don't even know. But there is where your flesh is, is dragging you, right? Maybe in lies, manipulation, bad things. There are many, right? But the flesh is wicked, right? So the only way 
The devil will keep hating you. You're not going to preach to him the gospel. You're not going to tell him the good news. He knows, right? You're not going to change the world. Matter of fact, it's getting even worse, right? Now LGBTQ is everywhere. In, in, the, in the ancient times, our parents used to teach us, girls, beware of boys around, rolling around. This time, we don't even know what to tell your kids. Beware of girls and boys because everyone can. It's actually a mess, right? We are in the season where things are getting bad. You can ask, parents knows how this, this is scary. Parents are scared, literally. The only person who can, who can guard the person in this life it is Christ alone. It is the spirit of the living God. You are not going to do it on your own. Matter of fact, if you're saved, you remember how you used to live before. You remember how you used to live before. That's why you need the grace of God every day. I will quote this scripture that Paul told the Galatians. He was asking them, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? I want you to know. I want to know who bewitched your hearts. Who told you that you're going to do this on your own might? Who told you that you're going to, to show God that you can do it? Sometimes I fought in this, in this trap of trying to please God in my own strength. It was like I was impressing God. You cannot impress God. Come on. What you're doing is because he's helping you to do it. And this develops pride in our hearts. Just because you can read the Bible... Thank the Lord and tell him, I'm grateful I'm reading your word. I'm grateful you honored me to understand this. Because without that heart, trust me, you will. You will not sustain this life. You will never. You will never in your own might. You will never. Trust me, you will never. You will never do it. You can't do it. We need the grace of God. We need the heart that relies on God every day, every morning, because the mercies of the Lord renews every morning, meaning that every morning there are new mercies. If you've, if you've, <laughs> it does not guarantee you that tomorrow it is the same way. The devil can, can have other tricks the day, right? Because you must doesn't even mean that you'll never do it tomorrow. There is new mercies, new grace every day. You need to rely in the morning when you wake up. Tell the Lord, I have so much grace to do, to do your perfect will in this day. Wake up and tell the Lord that, right? Rely on him at the point he's Alpha and Omega of your life. He's the only one you got. He's the, he can help you in every situation. This is the heart that Christians are losing, and this is terrible. It's getting us to the danger zone. Because pride is forced to destruction. Whenever the destruction is about to happen, signs and symptoms, pride. Uh, let me give you an example. I told the people who were in the first service. When I got saved, I had so much grace of reading the Bible at the point I could read and forget everything else. Trust me, I would read the Bible three times a year. Three times a year. Nobody told me that. At that point, I didn't know anyone. Glory, to, glory be to God because I, I will tell you where things are getting. That was the grace of God because I had joy. I was so, I was, I was a fool of Christ. If they tell a fool of Christ, I was a fool of Christ. I only wanted Christ. It, it was only my, my only desire. And the good thing about it, when you read it like that, it, it, you crave it more. That's what happens actually. And then until I felt in the trap of realized, thinking that I am good at reading the Bible. Yes. I said that, and I, it happened that one year I haven't even finished my Bible. It happened. I haven't even read a half of it that year. Trust me, I would read Mark. Hey, Mark is not ending. I would go to, to Proverbs. Hey, what is this? I started, losing, I started losing that joy. And the joy is the fuel. When you don't have the fuel, you're just dry. Eh? You see, pride quenches everything. So we need this heart that we need God. I'm not going to teach you how to pray. I know we are taught that. We all know that we need to pray at least one hour a day. Amen. You all know that at least you need to, to read five chapters of the Bible a day. At least, right? That's what we learned. But the information will not help you as long as you don't have the heart. Yes. That is humble enough to understand that you are enabled by God. Who has bewitched us, all oh Christians? Oh dear beloved brothers and sisters. You can't do this on your own might. I heard daddy once saying, this thing is not possible. You can't do it on your own. And I was like, ah, daddy, it is possible. We fast, we pray. What are you saying is not possible? He was saying this life of consecration is not possible And when you remove the Holy Spirit, right? And I was like, ah, daddy, 
I think it's possible. It's just commitment and determination. I believed in determination and commitment at the point. I didn't understand where grace of God falls in. I didn't understand how the Lord... I was so, I was so wicked in my heart. I was so ungrateful to not realize how God gracefully did, gave me things. And I don't want you to fall in that trap. That trap is dangerous. When you start getting there, your joy, poof, it's gone. It's gone. You start doing things in your energy. It gets tough. It gets bitter. It gets... Uh, and you don't know how to fix it, and you don't know how, you don't know anything about it. But this humble heart, understanding every day that it's your grace, understanding the love of God that He loved us through Christ, understanding how He loves us so much and how He's giving you joy, and He wants to keep it. I, I said it earlier. For example, when Japanese constructs the road of Rwanda at some points, right? You, you know we have aids, aids from our Jiraneza, donations from the deepest developing partners of Rwanda. You know, for example. But Chinese, they build this road of, for us. Sometimes they don't, they don't leave their engineers for maintenance, right? When it's broken, the government of Rwanda collects its money and fix the road, right? But for the Lord, the package of salvation he gave us, he also gave us a God right next to it. He gave us a God who is not going to teach you. He gave us like everything that you're going to use this donation like this. When this road bro breaks, call me, I will just fix it. I mean... We have so much grace to have this. We need to be humble enough to understand it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. He did not bring us this far to just leave us. He's so merciful and he loves us. He wants us to have this joy. He's not like the devil. We have a priest who can understand our weaknesses. We have a priest who goes down and understands what you're going through. We have a priest who understands that it's, it's very difficult for you. And he's trying much as he could so that you understand that you can do it and you give him the drive, right? He wants you to get out, step out and he, let him step in, right? I don't know if you understand. And my God, please let your people know. I don't know how to say this, but the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. He loves you and he's doing everything for you. He wants you to understand this. He wants you to understand this. Please stop playing these games. The devil does not love you. He wants to kill you in the end. He wants to kill you. And this evil heart of not being grateful is coming from him. So I, I, I want us after this sermon to please repent. Ask God forgiveness for relying on ourselves. It has caused us so much pain because for so many times, we consecrated ourselves to ourselves and we lied ourselves we are consecrated to God. Right? Just because you fast, there are people who do fasting, literally fasting, intermittent fasting, have you heard of the term? I, you guys don't. I've heard of people who fast like they are crusading, they are not, they are not seeking God. I've, overnight, don't you know people in the night club are also having their overnights just because they are having something they are over at, different from what you are having, but some people are doing overnight. I know, hands. People are doing it. They are sleeping in the club, but the Jamuri club, in the, in the morning, it happens. There are some people who do that. The difference between what you are doing to what others can do, it is the heart and the attitude. What matters is the heart, Bakunuba. I'm not lying you. When I want to speak my heart, I speak in Kinyaranda. <laughs> when I want to speak my heart, I speak in Kinyaranda because English sounds so professional and business-matic to me that sometimes you will not get it, but I hope by the, Lord, by the Lord's mercy you get what I'm saying. Your heart matters. Your heart matters to God. And your heart naturally is wicked. It's wicked naturally. In the heart of a man, there are many evil thoughts. There are many evil bad things, right? You already know. I, I, if they could project the hearts here, you could see. You could see. You're like, yeah, what? What you see, the reflection of goodness you see, it's what the Lord gave us. Trust me, it cannot be you. It cannot be you naturally. So don't, don't just do this and, uh, and think that you made it in life. No, no, no. You are enabled by the Lord. We are strengthened by our Lord. And as long as you don't understand this truth that you can do it on your own, you always fall in that trap. And it will affect not only your joy, I'm talking about the whole godliness will drop because the engine is no longer there. So beloved, let's repent to the Lord and ask him to give us strength. Renew, renew. I don't know. I, I, don't, I want him to because in our heads, he renew our minds, he gives us minds of 
not self-sustainability, Kaduha, dependency, the level of dependence where we need God in everything before you speak. You need God, you need God. We, didn't, we need God to live this life. We can't live it on our own. And to keep what he gave us, it takes him. So we can't do it. We can't do this without God in it. I'm sure we'll have a Thursday where Daddy will talk much about it and will give a lot of principles that I, I don't even know at the moment because I'm also learning. But I want you to understand that the devil does not want you to have joy, and joy is precious, but there is Holy Spirit. There is Holy Spirit, the helper. We were given by him for him to guide us, for him to direct us in the whole truth. And when you are humble enough to rely on him, no wonder why Christ would always say, humble yourselves and repent. Humble yourselves, because it takes humility to repent. You can't just repent when you think you're doing it right. Right? You can't repent when you know you're doing it right. And you're doing it wrong when you're doing it in your own strength. And doing in your own strength limits you, actually. Doing in our own strength limits us. I've realized how God showed me how I limited him and I put him in a cage because of my wicked heart. For example, he tell me, Deborah, I want you to pray this overnight. And I was like, God, I'm tired. Do you know what? You're, the, the wickedness in there is you not trusting the Lord who told you to do something to enable you, right? You get what I mean? If the Lord said, pray for one hour right after this, be, obey him and do it. Because he's able to do it. And it takes faith. Sometimes he's telling you an overnight and you're really sleepy. But I've realized every time we obey God and step in in situations that are not easy, he gives us strength. God is faithful. It just take the risk and have believe in him. You will never be ashamed. The Bible says, because I know this is not a masahayo reshe. It's very tough. A lot of people are sleepy. I understand it's hot out here. It's not easy. But I pray for the mercy of the Lord. Our bodies are weak at some point. I understand. But please, at least if you get one thing from the whole ceremony, at least if it's one thing, I want you to understand that joy is important. Joy, the joy that you have of the Lord, the devil doesn't want you to have it. And you cannot do this on your own. You need to let God in. You need to let your God in. Beloved, you can do it on your own. That's, it can just be that and I would leave the pulpit. You just need God to do this life. You need to rely on him. How do I rely on him? I believe, him, I believe in him. I go to his word. I come in his presence even if I don't have words to pray, to pray about. I just come and be like, God... I can't do this on my own. Just that. It's a, it, right? Right? Yes. I know it's not easy. It's not easy, but I will pray for you. I will pray for you. And I will plead to my God, the God of our daddy, the God of our facilitators that we see, the God of these heroes of faith that Stella talked about before, the one who enabled Elijah, the one who enabled Paul, the one who enabled Peter, the one who enabled everyone to strengthen us. It's not easy, but with him, we're going to do it. Father God, I thank you. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're merciful. Lord, you're good. You love us. You love your people, oh God. You love me, oh God. You love the teenagers who have had this word, oh God. We thank you for your goodness and your love. We thank you that you want us to live with complete joy. We thank you that you want us to live fully for you. And we thank you that we provided everything worthy and everything possible for us to live that life in abundance, oh God. You are good. You are a great God, oh God. We acknowledge your existence. We acknowledge your existence, O oh God. And I acknowledge that what we ask and it's in your will, you will give us as you promised in your word, O oh God. You are faithful. Even if you're faithless, you are faithful. You stay faithful. Holy Spirit, you stay faithful. Holy Spirit, you stay near us, O oh God. Sometimes you don't even recognize. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Jesus. Lord, forgive us. Forgive me, O oh God. Forgive the teenagers, O oh God. Forgive us, O oh God. Lord, forgive us, O oh God. Lord, forgive our sins, O oh God. Forgive our wickedness, O oh God, of not acknowledging you, of not believing in you, O oh God. Forgive us, O oh God, for the self-dependency, O oh God. Forgive us, O oh God. We've messed up. We've messed up. We've messed up, Lord. We've stained the gift you gave us. We've stained the joy, O oh God. 
And we plead to you, O oh God. We plead you by the mercies, Yahweh. By your mercies, we plead to you, O oh God. Cover us in the blood of Jesus. Wash us with your blood, O oh God. We'll be clean. Wash our iniquities, O oh God. Forgive us our sins. May the blood of covenant, O oh God. May it clean and cleanse our iniquities, O oh God. Man, teach us to redeem time. Teach us, oh God. Teach us your ways, oh God. Teach us your ways, oh Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and move. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, come and move. Holy Spirit, come and move. Holy Spirit, come and move. For there is joy in your presence. For there is prayer. Rabba Shandere was Shakaya Baba 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 Ba